today. From Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina, this is the NFL on EA Sports. and the Carolina Panthers taking on Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. Just a spectacular afternoon for football here in the Tar Heel State of North Carolina as EA Sports welcomes you inside Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Just a moment ago, the lights, the cameras, the action, all the pyrotechnics, everything was ablaze, everything was allowed here in Bank of America Stadium as Carolina emerged from their tunnel. And we are ready to go as the Panthers get set to match up with the Minnesota Vikings. Joseph ready to get this one started. And off we go from Uptown Charlotte. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, called it the 26. The Panther offense ready to go for their first possession. And at the helm, you see him in his first year in Carolina after three with the Jets. It's Sam Darnold. Many people put stock in a quarterback's record as a starter, and Sam Darnold just 13 and 25 overall with the Jets. So many think that he's not going to be the guy, but there's a lot of talent there, and the Carolina Panthers are expecting it to come out. This could be a classic case of a change of scenery could do him well, plus the surrounding cast that he's inheriting in Carolina better than anything he played with in New York. This is a great opportunity for Sam Darnold. Darnold on first down. That'll be caught by his tight end, Ian Thomas. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Looking to throw again on second down, Darnold. Open man left side, it's the tight end Trimble. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. The Carolina Panthers picked up Tommy Trumbull in the third round from Notre Dame. This is a tight end with terrific upside. A tremendous blocker now showing good hands on that catch for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. The last run got six, now second and four. Going quickly out wide to Moore. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Darnold will throw it on third and one. And this is too far behind his man. He missed him. It's incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And Joseph Charlton and the punt team on now for the Panthers. K.J. Osborne deep for Minnesota. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. 
And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. For the Minnesota offense ready to go to work here. Their quarterback in his 10th season overall now and fourth is a Viking, Kirk Cousins. After the career that he's had in the NFL thus far, you get the sense that he was underrated coming out of college. Not just great intangibles, but the ability to make plays come alive, whether he's exiting the pocket or throwing from within the confines of it. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. The first down run, not going to get him a whole lot. Maybe a yard. And it looks like just one yard there. So that'll bring up second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. And that's why Dalvin Cook is the Minnesota Vikings feature back. You put the ball in his hands, good things happen. Second in the NFL last year in rushing with 1,557 yards, and that's now back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons with 30 combined total touchdowns. What a player is Dalvin Cook. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and 10. To throw is Cousins. Throw left side complete. That's Smith. Three yards the gain there, second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. On second down, Cook. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. The Panthers turn to their nickel set here as they get ready for third down. Throwing Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. What did they call that on? Well, this crowd does not like that call. Understandable reaction from them. That's their team that the penalty's going against. But you and I both know they're going to take care of the quarterback. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and 10. Here's Cousins. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll run with Cook. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They'll run for it with Cook. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Dalvin Cook. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings have taken a first-quarter lead. 
Well, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. McCaffrey with a first down and more. As he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. It's a seven yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run got seven on first, here's second and three. To throw is Darnold. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw, Darnold. They'll get this to McCaffrey out of the backfield. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? 
Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. Steps away to his left. They give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. It's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. Darnold now to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They read zone coverage there and thought there was some space to send their guy right into the middle on a slant, hoping he would get lost. Instead, they read it quite well and closed quickly. Three points there, and CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. This will be fielded inside the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they're hoping to redo their efforts of the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 right at the 30. Cousins. He'll dump this off to Cook. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. To throw again on second down. Cousins. And that would off the mark behind him. Incomplete. D.D. Westbrook, his intended receiver. And it's third down. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Knocked away and incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on the punt. Nine-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Panthers will take over now, first and ten. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game, 
because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Now it's Darnold. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Panther first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? On first down, this is McCaffrey. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 61 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Donald's throw is caught here by Anderson. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And Robbie Anderson makes a nice catch there for a first down. Now in his second year with the Panthers, but he has a history with Sam Darnold, his new quarterback. They played together with the Jets in Darnold's first two seasons, 2018 and 2019. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Off to Thomas on the left side. Three yards the game there, second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Throwing again on second down. Darnold gets this to his running back. It's Christian McCaffrey. Touchdown! Christian McCaffrey. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Panthers have taken the lead. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Now the try here for the point after. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So the drive there took six plays, and Carolina scores to cap it off. Three. 
And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. And you figure, Charles, they have enough time here in the first half, more than a minute, to put a drive together, at least get them in position to try a field goal. Yeah, they've got all three timeouts at their disposal, so I'm actually thinking bigger. With those three timeouts, that amount of time on the clock, I'm thinking about trying to get a touchdown and settle for a field goal. First down, here's Cousins. The open man is Westbrook. A gain of six there on first. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Looking to throw again on second down. Cousins. His throw incomplete. Good coverage on the outside, and I think that's where he wanted to check that down to. But once he saw the danger over there, he just threw that one over everyone's head. Smart play. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Cousins to throw it. Catch is made here by Irv Smith, Jr. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Cousins now from the 50. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area. So it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. Complete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll throw again. Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A first down for Minnesota. Cousins finding Thielen. And it shouldn't come as any surprise that you say Adam Thielen made a catch and it was for a first down. He comes off another solid season, over 900 yards receiving, one of the best route runners in the NFL. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Cousins. He's going to get this one down to Cook. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Cousins again. Complete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. Second and 10 now from the 27. From the gun, here's Cousins. And he completes it to Westbrook. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one.
Craig Joseph for the Vikings steal game. A 33 yard attempt. The kick by Joseph is good. And that will tie things up as we head toward halftime. Well, maybe a nice psychological boost there just to get back to even with that field goal as we head towards half. Coaching 101 always says at halftime, play it like it's 0-0 on the scoreboard. Well, in this case, it's level, right? Same score each side. Just start over. Now you've got the second half to play. anything here late in the half he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive as he'll take over with just 13 seconds to go before the break. Now whistles flag down I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. scoreboard taking it about the one and out a little across the 25 to the 27 and the Vikings set to go on offense to begin the third quarter it's a tie football game here what do you think Charles the message was at halftime well I think that they probably just looked at things and said we're fortunate that this is a tie game no need to panic no need to change a whole lot we didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Starting the third quarter with Cook. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Working with second and five now. They run it again with Cook. And he's going to be stopped well behind the line of scrimmage, and that's pretty much going to wipe out their gain from first down. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. 
He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Then we got to give a little tip of the cap for the defense there. Zone coverage, locked it in tight, made it really difficult because they tried the crossing route against it, and it worked for a completion. But you have to know where the sticks are on third down. Didn't get beyond them. No pickup. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. The Panthers' offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. It's Darnold. And he'll air this one deep for Anderson. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. Throwing again on second and 10. Darnold to the right side and complete to Thomas. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a Panthers first down, 17 yards on the play. It's a nice zone breaker right there. Take the tight end, move him out to the slot then have him run a corner route versus his own coverage, which means he's going to be behind the, the, the shallow coverage and ahead of the deep coverage, put the ball right on him. to McCaffrey and that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line two yards the loss second and 12. Uh, that's a tough one right there he ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss I think quarterbacks got to see that got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous Second and 12. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. 73 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Darnold on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong and now it's fourth down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free.
Here's the Panthers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game, all right, in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage out of this snap? And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Brian Burns. What a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. Nice play there by Brian Burns chasing down a quarterback in the pocket. He had 16 and a half sacks in his first two years in the league, including nine in 2020. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage, too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Here's Britton Colquitt now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That's returnable now for Smith. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And his offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Carolina getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Good starting position for the Panthers as they come up first and 10, right at the 50-yard line. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Second and eight coming up. Here's Darnold. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now Darnold. Well, they're going to be incomplete. They always say the real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. You can't be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. Here's the Panthers punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. 
And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Cousins now to throw on first down. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Brian Burns picks up his second sack of the afternoon. as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Cousins gives way to Cook. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. The Vikings on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and a mile. Cousins now. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There's pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Here's Smith to return it. Gets past one man. A nice return that time. Gets 12 yards back. The Carolina offense about ready to go. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity. All tied in the fourth quarter. got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 just shy of midfield at the 48. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey and he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Yeah I don't know if it's exactly a win-win but if you're on offense you'll take that kind of a run all right it was kind of stacked up found a little bit of yardage and frankly they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense the playbook is still open for the coordinator. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. 
And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 43-yard line. 82 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And this is caught. He hits more. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. For many people, that's not your standard play call in that third down situation. But for so many offenses, they just want the ball in the hands of their playmakers in open space. And after he caught it, he did a nice job picking up the first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. so much for the four-minute offense. They were trying to reduce the clock, get in position to win the game, and leave no time for them to come back and catch them. And guess what? They turned the ball over. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, they had it all set up for themselves, and they let it get away. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. The fumble recovery certainly has put them in the driver's seat. First and 10, all tied here in the fourth. now after the fumble recovery quick hitter here it's complete and they're able to get this one across the 35 first down yardage on the first play of the drive 14 yards I like what I'm seeing from them here tie game in the fourth quarter they understand the situation they don't need to be in any rush go ahead and huddle up and run your offense that last completion put them in a nice position to take the lead in this game a tenth carry in the game for Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A 14-yard pickup. That's 14 yards on two straight plays. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. The Vikings in the hurry up. They're hustling up to the line. Cousins to throw. That is caught by Thielen. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with an even 90 seconds remaining on the clock. Yeah. 
So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. A give. This is Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Again, it's Cook. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Now the Panthers going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. It's a pickup of three, but it brings up what will be an interesting fourth and one. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. Joseph's got it. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there, gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get into field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop they're going to get out of here with a victory. Joseph now to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So Darnold and the Panthers now. Down 13-10, 34 seconds to go. They need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Darnold to throw. That's into the hands of Marshall. And that not what they wanted. They lose yards on first down. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Oh, I know it goes against the grain here. It totally goes against it, but you've got to drop the ball in that situation. He makes a catch, but he loses yards and doesn't get out of bounds. One last throw now for Darnold. Gets this to Moore, and they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You were wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot.
So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from Charlotte.